Nice to meet you. Hi, Sam. Hi. So I'm Sam Oakley from Informer Tech. And at the 5G Core Summit 2023, we have Amir Halilovic from Global Data. Amir, your uh, keynote yesterday was a fascinating, I think one of the highlights of the event. Um, I'm keen to know a bit more about the white paper that you created um, and kind of why this is so important for the industry right now. All right. Well, the issue that uh, we are covering has been somewhat neglected. Uh, the resilience and stability of core networks uh, has always taken the back seat to, you know, just the sheer performance and, uh, and feature sets. But uh, as we are uh, moving forward in the development of Core and 5G, Core and 5G SA on the basically on the uh, horizon. Uh, we are seeing the increased number of incidents. We are seeing increased number of outages, and uh, that is is extremely detrimental, especially detrimental in uh, the light of the, uh, of the fact that we are going to have um, enterprise critical use cases running on let's say 5G SA that really do not tolerate any kind of outage, let alone hours long outages and so on. And therefore, um, this topic of core stability and resilience, uh, we thought that it, uh, it needs uh, really to be uh, taken to the spotlight and that's what we have done. Great, and, and the topic of uh, network, core network reliability and stability sometimes is kind of undervalued or underplayed by operators. What do you think they need to be doing to kind of right that wrong or to address that? Yeah, well, what we have found was uh, that uh, most cases where the outages happened, they were caused by the network, uh, broadly speaking. And the second uh, most important cause of outages was human uh, factor. So that kind of points to two directions. One direction is increasing the uh, reliability and resilience of network elements themselves and also the network as a system through different means you know through in increasing redundancy through uh, faster handovers etc etc um, the other direction uh, that uh, that concerns the network is increasing uh, observability or visibility of what's happening in the network and like the level of control and granularity that operators have over their networks so that they can detect uh, the, uh, let's say, incidents before they actually happen, detect the, the sub-health state, so to say, of network elements before they actually fail, so that they can prevent service disruptions and so on. Uh, then, obviously, building on that uh, and uh, related to the human factor is the automation. Uh, it's, it's usually said that whenever you have manual processes, you are going to have human errors happening and that's kind of inevitable. Uh, once the automation kicks in, once uh, we implement uh, AI-driven and intent-driven uh, automation, then, uh, then obviously this uh, number of incidents based on human factors should decline. So that's, uh, I think, some of the directions that uh, operators should be taking. But first and foremost, they have to establish where they are at the moment, do a little bit of, uh, uh, let's say, stock taking uh, where they are, and uh, adopt the roadmap. And I think that we have a very good methodology kind of roadmap in uh, our white paper that has been developed in cooperation with different partners in the industry, both from the operator from the vendor side. So uh, it, it, it's, I think, quite uh, solid and, and well worked out methodology that, that can be used to actually outline this roadmap and what measures should be and can be taken to improve resilience and stability. Great. And I guess just building on that, um, I'm thinking about the, the role that the industry as a whole could or should be playing to kind of address core network stability. Could you just provide some thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, the one I think of the initial objections, or not objections, but one of the uh, initial shortcomings we see in, in the industry was that the uh, issue of stability and resilience has not really been addressed in standards. Uh, uh, standards uh, like 3GPP usually outline uh, different features of uh, 
about the network, but do not stipulate how resilient, what methods should be used in resilience. So, so I guess a, a little bit more attention to uh, to resilience should be definitely um, worked into uh, the standards. Ideally, it would be. I think that uh, uh, from the regulatory side, we're seeing that there is a lot more uh, focus uh, of the governments and regulators on resilience and stability of the networks. So uh, there's there's there are things kind of coming at the industry, so industry will have to deal with it. And I think that the best way to uh, to actually go forward is to think about resiliency much more when standards are being defined. Um, and from that point on, uh, that would be uh, that would be an ideal situation. Right now, we have a kind of industry cooperation behind this white paper. You know, hopefully, more initiatives like this are are going to ensue, and uh, the best practice sharing definitely should happen. Um, in industry fora and also across different uh, standards or industry cooperation bodies that we have. So uh, I think that would be an ideal situation and that should happen more. Very interesting. We'll watch this space. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amir.